Welcome to Pixel Hobbies. I finally finished the conversion of Element RC Enduro Trail Runner into a low CG build using the GSP B3 chassis. I really liked the IFS, but I felt that the Trail Runner was being limited by two things. First, it was being limited by the smaller size tires, and that it can benefit from bigger 4.75 inch tires. However, in order to use the bigger tires, I need to either trim the body quite extensively or use a different body. Second, as much as I like the look of the trail runner body, it's a bit top and rear wheel heavy. Even with the 60-40 weight distribution, it felt like the body was holding it back from performance on very steep climbs. In both cases, it was calling for a new body. Since I had an extra G-Speed B3 chassis in G10 material, I set out to see if I can build a G-Speed IFS using as much of the stock components. I figured it was going to be fairly straightforward conversion, so I did not film the actual conversion, and it turned out to be not as straightforward as I had anticipated. But now that I've done it, it's actually a pretty simple conversion, so I want to share my experiences with you. The only items that I needed for the conversion were as follows. A GSP B3 chassis. I'm using the G10 material, but they offer on carbon fiber as well. I needed quantity 3 of the 70mm chassis spacers. I ended up using a TGH Delrin skip plate as I did not like how the low stock skip plate sat on the chassis. I also ended up using electronics tray sliders to mount my electronics on left side and the battery on the right side. Other than those four items, everything is pretty much from the stock components for the conversion. Here's the finished product. It's my second time ever painting the body, so there are tons of flaws. But it came out decent enough. I used Tamiya PS30 Brilliant Blue and PS5 Black for the bed and the trims. And then I also used the PS12 Silver for backing the color. One thing I learned, don't chip out on masking tape. Make sure to use good quality ones. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me start from the outside and then we'll take a look under the body. As for the body, I used what I had. I decided to use a single unicorn body mount for the front and also two clips on the rear. Now let's take a look under the body. Basically everything from the midsection to the front end is a direct swap. Even all the upgraded parts, the SSD breast knuckles, the Boha string rack, the Three Brothers G11 350 ounce servo, just swapped over. The IFS top plate is 70 millimeters wide. So I just used the 70 millimeter wide chassis spacers. Normally I would have used the spacer for the front bumper but in order to mount the front plate, I had to use the front bumper mount. I also have a front bumper ordered, so I'll use that instead of the stock bumper, which should help with the approach angle. One thing, the two holes are slightly off, so I ended up just using one screw on both sides, but it's still pretty steady. I also mounted the upper shocks using the two lower holes. It gives a bit of angle inwards and it seems to work well. The midsection is where I spent a bit of time to make it work. Originally, I was going to use the stock skip plate, but it's set way below the chassis, especially with the angle skid of the G-Speed. It wasn't going to be too useful, so I decided to use the TGH Delrin skip plate. Mounting the transmission and the drive shaft was not an issue, but the ends of the link plate on the transmission side doesn't fit. It's wider than the opening. So I looked at a few different skip plates to see if it will work, but they didn't. So what I end up doing is trimming the ends by two to three millimeters on each side 
to fit the opening, and he works perfectly as you can see here. I was hesitant to cut the plastic just in case I was going to take it back to stock, but I figure I can always use spacers if I is needed later. The rear section is also a direct swap. One of the benefits of G-Speed chassis is that it offers tons of mounting positions. I used one of the upper holes to mount the rear upper link, which elevates it and helps with climbing. I also prefer high clearance links. So I have the lower links low, uh, ordered and I'll be swapping that over when it gets here. As I mentioned earlier, it's a pretty straightforward conversion. It took a bit of time to figure out how all things fit. But now that I've done it and I have shared it with you what you need to be watching out for, you should have no issue in converting the Trail Runner or Element IFS into a G-Speed LCG chassis. So that's my current setup for G-Speed IFS. It's at 59% front and 41% rear weight distribution weighing at 2,605 grams, just a bit shy of 5.75 pounds. I plan to fine tune it as I test it out, so be on the lookout for the running videos. Hope you found the information useful and don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching Bixong Hobbies.